Okay, before I go over routing the cables, first I'm going to, you have to put, uh, assemble one of your pulleys. It'll have a shield around it, like this. Now this here hole, this is an old bent up one, but this here is the hole that goes through the brackets. Like that, okay? And it'll go through the bracket, through the shield, and notice the small AN3 bolt hole, which is 187. That'll give it good clearance. The shoulder on those bolts is about 180, or yeah, about 184, 183. Anyways, it goes. I put that big bushing in the middle so that if it's not tall enough, you can put a washer up on top there. I would glue it on. It'll fit in there and keep this from pinching the wheel. And the wheel will glide on that bushing. And I don't have a good camera set up. There we go. So that slides in there. Line up the hole. Now the purpose in these holes is for cotter pins. And these cotter pins drop in right next to the wheel. The wheel will be riding right next to it. And that's what keeps the cable from possibly jumping out of the track of the wheel. Because the worst thing in the world would have to be your ailerons lock up by coming out of that wheel and pinching inside there. Now we're going to start at the root of the wing and see that guide. We're going to take the cable and this is called the uh, carry through cable. That's the one that goes overhead, passes through overhead. Okay, don't go falling on me, Wayne. Yeah, I need to get a camera set up. So now the cable is routed all the way through all of the guides and bring it over to the bottom pulley when it's rather flat and straight across and notice that there's cotter pins in the top of that. See the cotter pin here? All right. When you feed it through, make sure that it goes between the wheel and the cotter pin. So I always put it against the wheel and just slide it around. And then I bring it, do the same thing on the cotter pin that's on the front side. See that cotter pin right there on the left side of the wheel. It ain't the easiest thing in the world to get, but you get it on in there, pull it on through, and we're going to have to connect it up to the lower part of the horn for the aileron. Now, as you can see, the lower horn arm passes through the rear spar so to work on this part and get your clip right there I usually just grab a piece of wood and clamp it to one of the ribs while it's tilted up all the way just to give me the clearance so I'm going to use this here 20 thousandths shim stock stainless steel I'm going to cut me a couple of dog bones to put on either side of this to go between this and the cable. Okay, they're not shaped like a dog bone, but they have the same principle. And one thing that's important, I said 15 thousandths, that's what was on this shim stock. I do not use 15 thousandths shim stock to make these here dog bones, but I will continue with it. To demonstrate it I use about 25 thousandths per side thick stainless steel shim stock to make these 
And, uh, all right, so this here slot is going to actually have to be trimmed so that whatever you have connecting this cable all the way back to here is going to pass all the way through this. So once you connect this, this here slot's going to be opened up. I've seen these as ratty as two inch diameter ratty holes, uncapped, and the this rear spar has been solid as a rock 30 years later. So evidently it's, I like to keep it more round, but you just need enough to clear whatever your mechanism is that you're putting in here. Turnbuckles, whatever you use, they have to pass through this. This is quick and easy. Some people connect directly to this with the cable. But then what that requires is you pull the cable all the way through the wing anytime you want to remove the aileron or work on it. So you always want to use a wire thimble, cable thimble, and, and of course the same thing I always do. I didn't put the swedge on before putting it up through. And I will definitely knock the camera over if I try to do this. Alright, let me get this switched and go on. And there you have it. I'm not going to bother putting the nuts on since I'll just be pulling it back off. And of course this here will be need to be pulled through, which means you'll have to take it all apart and after marking it, kind of mark it where it needs trimmed, how far out it needs trimmed. And then you're going to have to trim it further because once you get the movement, that it moves up and down as it passes through there. This here bolt is going to pass through at a different position than the first one. The first, the, the front bolt, it's going to pass through up in here. The back bolt connected to the horn is going to pass through down lower. So you, it's not going to be just this nice little little cut out for the bolt. It's going to be bigger than that. Some people use pins, very shorter pins. It doesn't save you a whole lot, so I just go ahead and use a 1032 AN3 bolts.